about now, I'm Jay. C-Dub on the beat. Back against the wall, CL20's knocking ready. IGI's tripping, validated, shoot ready. Brown incarceration, got my people living daily. Gang wars back to back to the home is where they sent me. Yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day. Feeling blessed, and like I always say, is one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So with that being said, this is a familiar story. I got a little bit more inside information, but I, it was more or less a perspective that I wanted to ask. And now I want to share it along with my perspective in regards to this individual situation. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up or you can check my YouTube channel's playlist section and stream all my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time and thank you guys for you guys' support. Well, you know, now that a lot of these Mexican Mafia members and these big homies been walking the main line, we're starting to hear a little bit more stories about them. And what's crazy is that I got a couple of stories from individuals coming forth wanting to share their stories in regards to working with big homies and what happened to them. In this particular situation, like I said, dude's a familiar story. People have talked about him on other YouTube channels. I personally don't know the man, but guess what? My YouTube channel, just like Hustle and Flow. I'm in charge, DJ. I'm in charge. You know what I mean? So I'm going to give my perspective on this particular situation. Now, we all know Emilio Lopez, a.k.a. Tornito, Misa Wilmas, Wilmington. Man, I can tell you right now, I met so many homies I was locked up with on the SNY and the main lines. These, Wilmington, politics bad, bro. They Not only do they politic on each other, the east side and the west side, but there's always a big homie that comes up from that city. That's one city I always recognize, like, man, there's always going to be a big homie that's going to control that area. I wonder why, though. Well, if you guys can inform me on it, you know, leave a comment in the comment section. So this individual was locked up in a shoe for quite some time. But you know what's crazy is that, you know, him, Fly, Popeye, a few others, some of them, most of the time, are always on bad grounds amongst their own organization, amongst their brothers. But based on when you're living in the shoe, it's kind of hard to get a hold of these individuals. But you know what's crazy is that since they can't get a hold of certain individuals that are in bad standings or need to get blasted, you know, they couldn't start a war within, you know, the shoes, whether it's Pelican Bay, Cork and Shoe. I mean, look at Thuri. Thuri was in Cork and Shoe for a very long time, was being summoned to the Pelican Bay so he can answer to, you know, whatever it is he was going to answer to so they can get a hold of him and blast him there. Never happened. He built a fortress in Cork and Shoe and he built a fortress with a crew taking over yards. We all know the story. So Tornito, obviously, he had something coming for quite some time, as it's been told. But the situation in which I was recently enlightened on, it kind of makes sense because somebody kind of spoke about it, but in a different aspect. You know, they were trying to reach Tornito. They were trying to uh, sell up with the other made members so they can blast him. But for some reason, the prison administration was protecting him. He was not single cell status, but all of a sudden he couldn't get a celly. So nobody can get into a cell and reach this individual. So imagine that. Quite a lot of carnales are out there really in bad standings. But since they can't be touched and they can't be reached, they're still governing the yards and crews in which they're responsible for. And the streets as well. Even at that, when everybody got kicked out of the shoe, Tornito didn't get blasted until like a year later. Some, 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 year, some year or so later. So this, they gave this individual a lot more time to gather up even more power, more control, more crew members, more everything. Within that year time frame, and this applies to every, each and every carnal that's ever been placed on bad grounds or in bad standings, wasn't really placed on disregard yet because they didn't want to give him a heads up. But while they were you know, plotting and premeditating how they were going to blast this individual, it still gave them enough time to destroy other people's lives. A lot of these individuals came out of the shoe getting a lot more people whacked, overseeing everything, you know, in close quarters, seeing it for themselves. They didn't like what they see. Hey, blast this fool. Get him off the yard. So you can only imagine how many of these individuals that were already in blast standings that were supposed to end up getting blasted and getting their wind to how many more inmates, their own people, their own soldiers, good, solid Sureños placed on the SNY. Or in the dirt because these individuals wanted to rule with power. Their reign of power wasn't stopped as of yet. And you know what's crazy is that the prison administration was protecting Tornito. 
They wouldn't let him sell up with another Karna. But see, there's a lot of speculation about, you know, power struggles and the new MA trying to be recreated against the old MA, so on and so forth. But the reason that I bring this video up is a couple of subscribers that told me the same thing that have called me from behind the walls. And they told me straight up, no, the word on the yard is they identified him, that either he was working for law enforcement, he was a snitch, or his daughter was, and that he wouldn't give his daughter up. They said it was one or the other, but that's the biggest speculation on the yard. On the active yard at that. So I'm listening to this and I'm like, yeah, I can understand why a father wouldn't give up his daughter if that was the case. But if he was telling, probably because he, would, he already knew he was in bad standings. But what's the point of telling when you're, first of all, you got life, you're never getting out. Like I said, Artie did it. Turi did it. A lot more other people, a lot of other carnales, you know, fell from grace. But they gained as much as power and control as they possibly could, collected as much as money as they possibly could, and you know, and hit the gates running. So a year later, after him, after Tornito getting kicked out of the shoe, he still managed to control a lot. One of the most powerful individuals in the Mexican mafia. And they couldn't get they couldn't get to him. But the moral of the story is this: we all know the story of what happened to him. No M member could blast him, could reach him. So two individuals, Stomper and Spanky, from the San Gabriel Valley area. A certain city that starts with an M, I don't know how to pronounce it, and I kind of forgot it. I, couldn't, I wasn't able to write it down when they told me this. But these individuals were actually promised by Mexican Mafia members, individuals who were responsible for sanctioning Tornito's removal, telling them, you guys blast this fool and kill him, you guys will be made members. So what do you think these individuals did? Just like any other Sureño that's going to that's gonna want to rise through the ranks. Hell yeah, I'm going to blast him. I'm going to take his win. And there's plenty of other Sureños that actually have been given the same promise. Who aspire to become a mafia member, a boss. Take over, gain that power and control. Well, these two individuals blasted Tornito while he was getting escorted by cops. Broke through the escorts, managed to get the cops away from him and blasted him to death. But y'all know the golden rule, the cardinal rule, which I talked about plenty of times before. Only a carna can hit another carna. No regular Southside or Sureño could ever put hands on a carna, no matter if he's in bad standings or not. So what happened? These individuals got blasted later on down the road. So imagine that, what it's like. And I, I'm, I can't speak on behalf of Sureños or for them, but I, I do have the opportunity to speak up. I wouldn't want no Sureño to be ever put in that predicament and be like, you know what? This is what I want to become. If this is what I got to do, and this is what they're telling me I'm going to gain from it, then so be it, man. Fulfill your promise as a mafia boss. You know, this, this is your crew. Your crew may be working for you, maybe putting money in your pockets, maybe fulfilling all your favores, your endeavors, but it's your crew that's making you powerful, not just your organization. These mafia members need a actually start taking a high regard for these crew members that are actually fulfilling all their duties on behalf of them. But that seems to be the problem when it comes to leadership. They always forget about the manpower that got them there. They're all expendable. As long as they keep their position of power, as long as they keep their money, as long as they don't lose control of that, all these little minions don't matter. But what they're starting to forget is that we're going to utilize all our manpower, all my crew members, all these camaradas, all these norteños that work for us. We're going to use them till we no longer can, till they're no longer useful. But they forget to remember that everything these organizations were built upon was to protect these people, to protect their own gente. And years after years after years, decades after decades, these big homies forgot all about that. They got too much taste of power, too much taste of fame, of fortune, of control. They let this power really blind them to the fact that they're slaughtering their own gente. And then they wonder why the dropout rate's so big, why these SNYs are so big. Never mind the fact that there's still a lot of people on my YouTube channel that won't accept that. Like, ah, SNYs are still pieces of a, well, I'm a mainliner. Whatever, bro. Honestly, whatever. If you, if you can continue to glorify your big homies as worthy of being praised, then go praise that man. You know, you can grab his, uh, his, his thank thanks and just go... Mmm, polish them. They're nice food. They're feeding me. They're ready to go. Let your nuts hang. 
go ahead. Because these two Sureños that actually got blasted for fulfilling their duties got swallowed up by the politics, got backdoored by the politics when they were told by another carnal to blast this carnal. So you imagine that carnal being in the cell like, you know what? I don't have to get my hands dirty. I don't have to go back to the shoe. I could just put it in these guys' ears, man. You get, you get rid of this fool for me, you'll be made. No one goddamn well, his other brothers are going to blast these fools forever even touching a carna in the first place. But that's the little, you know, the puppet master game that people play. And honestly, I genuinely feel sorry for those, those Southsiders. Wherever they're at, if they're living and they're on the SCY, man, I, it's, it sucks that that was the rude awakening that they got. Hopefully they stood solid and then try to fight through it and appeal their case and, you know, get their, their day in court. But who knows? This was a story that I was just recently told. So obviously they got rid of one bad dude, did a hit for another bad dude, and they got hit in the process behind, you know, Carnales wanting to fight over who has the bigger sack, should I say. And I'm not talking about the one they feed in their vein either, but the other sack, the hairy one. The one that's all shriveled up looks like 100 years old. The one with like 72 wrinkles in it that you don't, I don't even like looking at mine like that to be honest with you, but anyways... So as one of my subscribers is telling me this story, this is actually his positive message. That he actually, is, he's just getting tired of it. He's getting tired of the big homies utilizing sureños, aspiring individuals who want to be part of this lifestyle but don't want to be, gun, don't want to be done dirty. Just want to become what these other individuals become. Or have became. But he said it's, now is the time that he said that he takes a look at it now, like, you know, we're, we're the majority in prison. Mexicans are all over the place, everywhere, even in the streets. We could be powerful as long as we stop killing one another. That what they're fighting for and what they're killing each other over is chump change compared to what people are making out here, these millionaires out here, these other mafias we're talking about, these businesses and, you know, corporations that actually make millions every day legally, not illegally, legally. But they're killing each other over yards and a couple of thousand. That, that we need to stop sharpening our weapons and start sharpening our minds and start doing something better for our people and with our people. Than to be using our people and killing our people. And I honestly agree with that message. That's all we're doing right now. And we think we, we're out here thinking that we're just Billy badasses looking at each other like, yeah, I'm bad, bro. I work for this big homie and I took out like five people. Oh, you work for that big homie, you took out like two Hell yeah, bro. This yard is ours, fool. This, this dirt is ours. Bro, that's the warden's prison. At the end of the day, he can do whatever he wants with that yard, and you're not going to like it. If he tells you to get on this bus and say, guess what, fool? This yard you were fighting over, I'm going to send you to a different one. You might not like that one. These shareholders that are sitting high and mighty on their chairs are sitting there like, yeah, let, let, let them fight. More profit for me. More profit for me. I'm becoming a millionaire. The more they fight... The more they kill each other, millionaire, bro. Man, just stack up my bank account. While we're over here trying to say who, who, who's the bigger and better raza amongst each other and to other ethnicities on the yard, who's the biggest and baddest? Well, guess what? The people that own these prisons are the biggest and baddest. All that power don't mean nothing. The power resides in that tower cop when he's able to say, you know what, I can either open his door or I can shut his door and leave him in there all day. How about that? Or the warden say, you know what? No one's going to get programmed for a very long time. You know who else has power? That parole board. When you think you're going to go home thinking that you were utilizing everybody else to do your dirty work, but you're going to show up to a parole board. Hey, man, I haven't caught a ride up in 10 years. Nah, that's power. Because all they got to do is just stamp and say, you know what? You're not fit for society. Here, come back in 10 more years. They control your lives. So all this fighting for the yards, just because you ain't got nothing else to fight for, people are getting slaughtered in the process. And I'm pretty sure this is one of many stories, many stories of good camaradas, good sureños that got put on the SNYR, solid homeboys behind dirty politics, behind two carnales wanting to see who, who had the bigger nads, the bigger bolitas. So I wanted to share that story with you guys. I, to me, when it, like, like I said, I've you know, never been a Southsider, so I'm, I'm real fascinated with sureño politics as well, as well as my... Northerners and everybody else's, but this story kind of makes you cringe a little bit. Tomorrow, I got exclusive information, exclusive information 
about that Mexican Mafia member fly and what took place and everything that was behind it. Plus, a story of an individual who actually was friends with him for a very long time. Worked with him since 2002. So, y'all stay tuned. So, with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When they got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.